Over 350 years ago, the daughter of a rich wine merchant of the city of the Shoguns, Edo, was attending a festival in the temple when she noticed in the crowd a young samurai of remarkable beauty. She immediately fell in love with him. He was wearing a furusode, a long-sleeved robe of a rich purple tint called murasaki. It had five crests upon it. Unhappily for her, he disappeared in the crowd before she could learn through her servants who he was or where he was from. But his image remained vivid in her memory, even to the least detail of his costume. Now the holiday attire then worn by samurai youths was scarcely less brilliant than that of young girls, and the upper dress of this handsome young stranger had appeared wonderfully beautiful to the enamoured maiden. She fancied that by wearing a robe of similar quality and colour, bearing the same crests upon it, she might attract his attention on some future occasion. Accordingly, she had such a robe made with very long sleeves according to the fashion of the period, and she prized it greatly. She wore it whenever she went out, and when at home, she would hang it up in her room, and she would try to imagine the form of her unknown beloved within it. Sometimes she would spend hours sitting in front of it, dreaming and weeping by turns, and she would pray to the gods and the Buddhas that she might win the young man's affection. Often she repeated the invocation of the Nichiren sect, Nam yo ho renge kyo, nam yo ho renge kyo, nam yo ho renge kyo. But she never saw the young man again, and she pined with longing for him, and sickened, and died, and was buried. After her burial, the long sleeved robe that she had so much prized was given to the Buddhist temple of which her parents were parishioners. It was an old custom to thus dispose of the garments of the dead. The priest, he sold it for a good price, for it was a quality silk and bore no trace of the tears that had fallen upon it. It was bought by a girl of about the same age as the dead lady. She wore it only one day, then she sickened and she began acting strangely, crying out that she was haunted by the vision of a beautiful young man and that for love of him she would soon die. And within a little while she died and the long-sleeved robe was a second time presented to the temple. Again the priest sold it and again it became the property of a young girl who wore it only once. Then she also sickened and talked of a beautiful shadow and died and was buried. And the long-sleeved robe was for a third time presented to the temple. And the priest, he wondered and doubted. Nevertheless, he ventured to sell the luckless garment once more. Once more it was purchased by a girl and once more worn. Again the wearer pined and died. And the robe was presented a fourth time to the temple. Then the priest was sure that there was some evil influence at work, and he told his acolytes to make a fire in the temple courtyard and to burn the robe. So a fire was made, and into it the robe was thrown. But as the silk began to burn, there appeared upon it dazzling characters of flame, the characters of the invocation. Nam yo ho renge kyo, nam yo ho renge kyo, nam yo ho renge kyo. And suddenly, one by one, they leaped like great sparks to the temple roof and the temple top fire. Embers from the burning temple presently fell on neighboring roofs, and the whole street was soon ablaze. Then a sea wind, rising, blew destruction into further streets, and the conflagration spread from street to street and from district to district, till nearly the whole of the city was consumed. And this calamity, which occurred on the 18th day of the first month of the third year of Meriki, 
1657, is still remembered in Tokyo as the Fyorosode Kaji, the great fire of the long-sleeved robe.